Now we're going to look at ionic compounds that still have a metal and a nonmetal. Charges still cancel to zero, but now we're going to look at the transition metals. So those metals are right here where it says transition elements. These are in the middle of the periodic table. So since these are metals, we could also call them transition metals, and I'm going to call those Tn. The charges can vary except for zinc and silver. So for example, iron can be a plus 2 or iron can be a plus 3 for reasons that we don't need to know. Copper can be a plus 1 or copper sometimes can be a plus 2. So we're not going to have to remember this, but I'm just going to show us that the charges still cancel to zero. So iron plus two can get together with chloride or oxide or nitride. Copper plus one can get together with nitride, oxide, or fluoride. So we're going to do some examples there for the charges canceling to zero. So the transition metal uh, that I'm going to use is going to be copper plus one. If copper plus one gets together with Cl minus one, then we're going to have one copper to one chloride. If copper plus one gets together with an oxygen, which is a minus two, the formula is going to require two copper plus ones for every one oxygen. So this will be Cu2 O. And one more example, if copper plus one gets together with nitride. Nitrogen is in the minus three column, so the charges on chloride, oxide, and nitride come from the charges that we've placed there. So we'll have copper, three of those, and one nitrogen. That's analogous to what we did on the previous slide with sodium. Sodium is always a plus one, so with chloride it's going to be a one-to-one -one ratio, just like copper with chloride. When sodium gets together with oxygen, there's two sodiums for every one oxygen. That's the same formula here, because copper is a plus one. And just to do overkill, Sodium and nitrogen takes three sodiums for every nitrogen, and this one takes three coppers for every nitrogen. The only thing different in the naming is that the transition metals, because the charges vary, the charge is in the name of the metal. So this one becomes copper, one, chloride, because the charge on copper is plus one. So the charge is in the name, and that's the Roman number. This one is copper, Roman number one, oxide. This one is copper, Roman number one, nitride. The only thing that we've done differently in the naming is we have included the charge in the name. Now I'm going to do some examples with copper plus two. So copper can have variable charges and sometimes it's a plus two. So I'm going to put this together with chloride and we're going to get one copper and two chlorides because it takes two minus one charges to cancel a plus two. The name of this is copper 2-chloride. So there's, just like with carbon monoxide, for example, CO and CO2, a different formula means we have a totally different thing. Well, oops, I forgot the R here. If we have this formula, 1 to 1 or 1 to 2, those are just as different as these two compounds. So the name has to reflect the difference. Okay. Let's put copper plus two with an oxide ion of oxygen. This will be CuO. Those charges already canceled to zero. 
And so that ratio is 1 to 1. And this is copper to oxide. And last but not least here, we'll put copper together with the nitride ion. Again, those charges are coming from where the atom is on the periodic table. And this one is going to be just like the previous slide where we had a magnesium plus 2 and a nitrogen minus 3. We can cross those charges over or we can come up with the least common multiple, which sounds a little bit mathematical there. But the formula will be the same. It takes three copper plus twos to cancel two nitrogen minus threes. Oops. So I was thinking that's where the two goes. That charge we can put over here, and this charge we can put over here. That's so that our brain doesn't have to think about the math. It's just a trick. This is copper two nitride. This gets confusing because there's only one copper here, but we call it copper 2, and there's only one copper here, and it's named copper 2, and here there's three coppers, and it's still named copper 2. So this Roman number is the charge on the copper. It's not how many coppers there are. Okay. So if you look in your book, you'll see the names of metals. For example, iron plus 2 is iron Roman number 2. Iron plus 3 is iron with the Roman number 3. So if we see a formula like this, FeO, if we're going to name it, we can't just call it iron oxide. And that's because when we look on the periodic table, we're going to see that this iron does not have a charge written above it. And that's because the charge can vary. So that's what the big deal is with these transition metals. So what we can do is use the nonmetal to figure out what its charge is. So we find O on the periodic table. O is a minus 2. So I put the charge on oxygen, and that means I can figure out the charge on the iron. Since one of these and one of these has to cancel each other, this has to be a plus 2. So this is iron Roman number 2 oxide. When iron 3 gets together with oxygen, we get this formula. And if we put the charge on the oxygen again, we see that three negative twos gives us a negative six. So the charge on this iron has to cancel the plus six, meaning we need three of these, I mean, that the charge would be a plus three. There are two irons. Two times three gives us positive six. So this is iron three oxide. And the summary of what we've been talking about, the two types of metals, I'm just going to put M, that's a metal that's in column one, column two, or column three, which is basically aluminum. Column two would be magnesium, Column 1 would be lithium and sodium. So column 1 plus 1, column 2 plus 2, column 3, aluminum. If we know the charge on the metal, this is only one possible charge. When the metal only has one possible charge, it does not need a Roman number after it. We're also going to have a transition metal. So this is a variable charge. So the, the naming rules for metals, we name the metal and we name the non-metal, but the metal may need a Roman number. So the transition metal requires a Roman number. So again, this is iron 2. The naming rules, uh, we're going to be able to tell if a metal needs a Roman number 
by where it is on the periodic table. If I don't have a charge written above it, then we're going to figure out the charge, and the charge will be the Roman number.